you guys, this is James with Rogue Duelist Trade and on this channel we talk about current and upcoming Yu-Gi-Oh product and whether or not you should invest your money in order to profit. We have a longly awaited discussion that we're gonna be going over in today's video. I've gotten this a lot in the comment section from you guys, which is how can I get Yu-Gi-Oh product at wholesale rates? And I have news for you, you can't. No, I'm just joking. There's definitely ways to get Yu-Gi-Oh product at wholesale rates, but there's a million hoops that you have to jump through. So I hope you guys are ready to go through that. But before I get there, one amazing way to get Yu-Gi-Oh product at near wholesale rates is joining the RDT Patreon in partnership with Pro Play Games. We just opened a bunch of spots that is able to buy product from our level four to our level six tier. I'll talk about that at the end of this video. But before we get into the content, I have a non-sponsored shout out that I would like to give to one of my subscribers subscribers who is also a master beat maker, and that is Russell Beats. Russell Beats reached out to me in the comment section and has enjoyed the channel and wanted to give me access to some of the beats that he's made, which a lot of you guys have enjoyed. I've had so many great comments of people saying how great the beats are in these videos, and that's all because of Russell Beats. I want you guys to go swarm his Instagram, at Russell Beats, go follow him, and if you guys ever need somebody to make you some beats for whatever it is that you might need beats for, He's your guy. All right, let's jump right into our content today. So we are gonna talk about buying wholesale for Yu-Gi-Oh! and pretty much the legit way of being able to get wholesale rates for Yu-Gi-Oh! is going directly through a distributor. So we're gonna talk about a lot of the hoops that you have to jump through in order to work with a distributor. And one of the main hurdles is having to have a physical brick and mortar retail card shop. So Konami has contracts with the distributors which basically ties their hands to where they are not able to sell to any online e-commerce Yu-Gi-Oh! sellers. I know pretty much everything that I need to know about being able to get Yu-Gi-Oh! at wholesale rates because I was trying to do that for several months, but it is such a big hurdle to have to have a brick and mortar location because you have large upfront costs that you have to have. You usually have to put down a pretty large down payment in order to get into a property and then you have your monthly expenses. Now, if you are to actually buy the location, then you have to pay your mortgage or if you're renting, then you're gonna have to pay a pretty hefty rental fee and that is not for the faint of heart. It is very expensive, especially where I am in Colorado. It's very expensive comparatively to a lot of other states to live in Colorado. So that is definitely a big barrier of entry is having to have a physical location. Now on top of having to have a physical location, the location has to be zoned for retail. So you can't just go and get like a storage unit or something like that and call it a card shop. It has to be zoned for retail. You also need to have play space available for I believe nearly 20 people. So you have to have a fixed table space that cannot just be easily folded and taken away with fixed chairs that aren't like foldable chairs. So you can't just go and stage a card shop, take an image and then take everything down. You need to sell product and have shelves with product displayed on it. So you have to have physical product. And on top of that, you have to have a glass casing where you are selling singles. These are all restrictions that most distributors have. Some of the restrictions are a little bit different than others, but for the most part, they're the same. Next, you have to have a physical sign outside of your building. So in my case, if I wanted to open a shop that said Rogue Duelist Trade, I have to have a logo on the outside of the building or text on the outside of the building that says Rogue Duelist Trade. And you have to have a window decal with your store hours on it. I found out you actually have to have a permit depending on the city and state that you live in to actually be able to put a sign outside of your building and you have to have a separate permit in order to have any type of advertising or store hours or logos on the outside of your window of your property. So that requires two different permits and at least in the state of Colorado, depending on what city you're in, that's like five to $800 to do that. In order to get a logo made on the outside of your building, that's like another seven to $800 in order to do that. Also, you need to have a physical cash register inside of your shop. That doesn't seem like a big deal, but that usually does require internet. So that means you have to have internet inside of your shop in order for you to be able to use your cash register, unless you can kind of do like a hotspot type of situation where you can set that up. And lastly, and I may be missing something, you also have to have dedicated parking space for your shop. And that can be kind of tricky depending on where you wanna set up a shop. Because if you have a shop that's like in a downtown area that has shared parking or has paid meter parking, 
that can be a little iffy if that's gonna be able to pass. So those are basically the main hurdles. And guys, don't forget, if you have to have a physical shop, that requires you to actually have furniture. So all the things that I listed out, you need to be able to have tabletop space and chairs for up to 20 people. So that's some furniture. You're probably gonna need two to four tables and you're going to need at least 20 chairs in order to accommodate that. You're going to have to be able to get a glass case. I've gotten quotes on that used and that costs about three to $400 or something like that. You gotta get product shelving. That's gonna cost you about another couple hundred bucks. And then depending on how you set up your store, you might wanna have some other types of places where people can walk around and find products. So that does add additional expenses as well. And then you need to have a cash register. And I've looked into things like Square and that can be pretty expensive you can find them used probably for like three to four hundred dollars for that as well and as i mentioned you have to have a logo outside of your building you have to pay for your permits you have your monthly rent you add all that together and you're going to have a very large upfront cost of probably like i don't know five thousand dollars and then you're going to have your ongoing cost probably for your internet or for an account that you have with your payment processor and obviously your rent and that adds up a lot and depending on where you live that can be a hefty amount of money as well so i have all respect in the world for anybody who has actually opened up a physical card shop again it's not for the faint of heart and for people who have actually made that investment and are staying alive means that they have a pretty decent cost model because they do have a lot of expenses. It's not cheap to go and start off your business. So I definitely have full appreciation for that. And that's why guys, if you try to go to your card shop and if you're trying to get product through your card shop for cheap, like close to what they're paying, why would they want to do that? Because they have a lot of expenses that they need to pay. So one of the other things that you need in order to work with a distributor, which helps you get wholesale pricing, you have to have a resale license for your state. So that's basically, you get a license to where a distributor can give you product without having to give you tax because you are going to go and resale that product and you're going to collect tax. So a distributor is not gonna collect tax from you because if you're gonna be collecting tax from your customer, there would be a double taxation, which is something that is a Avoided if you have a resale license from your state. And having a resale license typically requires that you have your own business entity. So you could start off a sole proprietorship, you could start off an LLC, you could start off a corporation. There's lots of different methods that you could go. I am actually a sole proprietor myself. I do have a resale license and I can work with distributors. I just can't buy Yu-Gi-Oh! because of all the things that I just listed off to you guys. Probably one of the last things that you need in order to get wholesale pricing on Yu-Gi-Oh! is you have to pre-order product up to three months before the product actually comes out into the market. So that's actually crazy because most of the time we know close to zero information on what is actually coming in a product before we actually get it in the TCG. Now I can say that we are lucky to be in the TCG because in the OCG, they get core product and deck building sets which are almost identical to the core product deck building sets that we end up getting in the TCG. And also they have duelist packs which is very similar to our legendary duelist packs, which are mostly the same as well. So we can look kind of like in a crystal ball at the OCG and we can basically have an idea of what we're gonna be getting in the TCG through that, but not all product is like that. There's a lot of side sets that come in like Megatins, Dual Overload, Dual Power, those types of sets, or another product like Toon Chaos. There's things that are specific to the TCG that we'll end up getting that the OCG doesn't. And in those types of sets, you really have to use your gut and decide, okay, am I going to make this investment three months ahead of time with close to no information except for maybe like one to two cards? Or Konami might give you like the smallest leak, like for example, in Legendary Duelist Season 2, a blue eye support card and a galaxy eye support card, you really have to take a risk. Thus, why I started Rogue Duelist Trade, because I have a lot of people that ask me, James, why are you making videos three months ahead of time? We don't know that much information. Are you doing this for clickbait and just to get views? That is absolutely not the case. The reason why I started Rogue Duelist Trade, I wanted to have a resource myself to help me understand whether or not I should invest into a product because I have to do it three months ahead of time with little to no information. So what I decided to do is to fill that gap and help be that resource for you guys by looking at what information can we look at at previous sets, kind of reading between the lines and the marketing that Konami gives us and help make an educated guess and decision through our risk analysis as to whether or not we should 
consider investing in product. But that is one of the main things because if you want to get wholesale pricing, you need to buy it close to three months ahead of time because that is when distributors are actually able to make orders to Konami and Konami prints based on pre-orders made by their distributors. Because in a sense, three months ahead of time, there's almost like an unlimited quantity of cases that are available that you can buy. And then by the time pre-orders pass, now quantities become limited because Konami is only printing based on the pre-orders that came through. So the only times that you're usually able to get product after pre-orders is if distributors have customers that back out of their orders and now they have additional quantities that you might be able to go scoop up. And the other way is having to go an additional layer after the distributor, which is a customer that was able to pre-order a bunch of product. You might be able to get it from them at a decent price, but it's going to be more typically than what they got at wholesale from their distributor. So again, pre-ordering three months ahead of time is very important. That is why this channel exists. It's to help you guys consider the information out there so that you can make the best decisions you can in getting your product at the lowest cost possible before market launch. So you guys are probably wondering, James, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get distributor rates with everything that you said. And I understand that because I came to that conclusion myself. Although it does matter kind of like who you know, like if your best friend happens to be a card shop owner, then maybe you might be able to work something out. But not all card shops are able to get the best wholesale pricing. It really depends on the quantities that they do. I know my two local card shops, they do not get the best prices. I've actually seen the prices that they get and it's not that good. But I can tell you it is not that competitive and in most cases I could probably find it cheaper elsewhere by buying it online. But then you do have some of these larger card shops that you'll be able to see on TCG players, pretty much the card shops that have like 50,000 plus sales. Those are probably the ones that have a lot more leverage in their negotiations with their distributors or they buy in high enough quantities that they're able to get their costs down. So again, it could be who you know. If you happen to be best friends with somebody like that and you happen to be in their local area, you might be able to get prices significantly lower than most people, but it is not that easy probably for 99% of online sellers that are out there. So with all that said, I've been down this trail so many times trying to figure this out because I wanted to be able to start a Patreon and helping you guys get near wholesale rates because if you think about it, the amount of cost that you have to pay for a brick and mortar location, thousands of dollars that you have to spend monthly versus paying a fraction of the cost for a Patreon. In partnership with ProPlay Games, we are able to get you guys near wholesale rates. We have this Patreon here to be able to support you guys and help you find another option, another way other than having to go and start your own card shop where you have so many expenses, the amount of money that you save on Yu-Gi-Oh product is underwhelming based on the amount of expenses that you now have from having a physical retail location that you need to maintain. So guys, definitely consider it. Check out the Patreon down in the description below. We just opened up some new spots for our level four, level five, and level six. They are all very limited. And the reason why we have them limited is because we can only support so many people based on how many cases PPG is actually able to go purchase and send out on your behalf. But I get it, not all people are willing to make a monthly commitment to a Patreon. There are other options that are not as cost effective, but they are still cost effective, which is sites like Game Nerds, Dave and Adams. Definitely check out local card shops. They might be able to get you decent prices depending on what their leverage is and how much product they buy. And I should also mention another great resource is Tier Zero Games. Tier Zero Games, I think you can use What's Good 5, and you can also support John from House of Champs in using that code and that is not a sponsorship from him. I've actually used it myself before and you can get product coming from the EU. Sometimes I like to go that route because the EU can get better ratios than the US can in some cases. So guys, that's gonna end it for this video. What did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. This is a subject I've been wanting to cover for a long time and the only reason I haven't is because there's just been so much product I've been needing to cover. But we actually have a pretty big lull from now until November until we get any more product which means I might not be doing risk analysis videos for about the next month and a half. And if that's the case, then we'll do more videos like this and be able to give you guys more content and tips to help you guys make better investments in Yu-Gi-Oh. Also guys, I started Rogue Duelist TV, which is a brand new channel that I have on YouTube where I'm able to kind of do more creative content on Yu-Gi-Oh outside of Yu-Gi-Oh investments. I did a then and now video of one of the top Yu-Gi-Tubers, which is Team Samurai X1. I reviewed 
his early videos and compared that to his newest video. It's actually absolutely hilarious. If you guys wanna see Sam when he was like 12 years old or something like that and see how far he's come from his early beginnings up to where he is now, you guys should subscribe to Rogue Duelist TV. I'm gonna have more content like that. I'm gonna do more then and now videos on some of the top Yugi tubers in the community. And I would love to get ideas from you guys on Yugi tubers you would like me to cover. So definitely go check out that channel. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to Rogue Duelist Trade and you like Yu-Gi-Oh! investment content, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Also, to help the YouTube algorithm to support this channel, like this video. Again, that helps the YouTube algorithm and helps spread this content and we can help grow this channel together. I hope you guys enjoyed today's content. We'll see you in the next video.